Assalamu alaikum, this is Xenomix, welcome to another tutorial. You may have seen the new logo on the CSS Mixes website and the new video. Thankfully I've been getting a lot of very positive feedback and I thought as a way to show my appreciation I would show you exactly how I designed the CSS Mixes logo on Photoshop. So at first I was just searching through some fonts and I came across the Star Avenue. For some reason I just put the word CSS Mixes together like this and actually I think I did it in capital letters if I just do this again CSS mixes and as you can see I like the fact that both S's were kind of connected so I thought I'd download it then I went to Photoshop and if I show you here before we actually start this is the kind of thing that I will be showing you exactly how I did right? I went through many stages in order to get to the final logo. The one that I'll be doing now may not be exactly like the one that's on the website, but it should be very similar. So first thing I did was to go to Control N or File New. Then I made it 800 pixels by 400 pixels. Pressed OK. Now when I first started this, I started it in blue. But as you can see, the actual one is kind of grayish. I'll just make a gray background for now. There we go, and make it a bit darker. Right, that's fine. So then I made a new layer. Then I went to press T for text, and I typed in CSS in capital letters. As you can see, I cannot see the text because the color is exactly like the background's color. So I'll double click on the text, go here, and change the color to white, press OK. Now, this is not the font that I want, so I'm going to change it to STAR Avenue. Press Enter, and I've got the font changed. This is still a bit too small, so I'm going to click here to get into the transform menu, hold shift and make it bigger. Now to get out of the transform menu, press enter. Now I'm out of it. Now I'll drag it to the middle. As you can see, I'm, I'm missing another S, so I'll press T, click here again and press S again. I did have a problem with this, as the two S's didn't join. Obviously this is lower case, so that's here. As the two S's didn't join correctly, so what I thought I'd do is I would take this C away and I would take this S away and I'd go to my cursor here and I thought I would duplicate this layer if I make this a bit smaller before click hold shift drag like this press enter drag it to the middle so I duplicated this layer by going to control J then I held shift while holding in the middle making sure that my show transform controls is on holding shift and dragged it like this see that until there was a space left. Right, now from far away this may not no be noticeable but in Photoshop if I zoom in here there's still a gap. We will get to this later on. So this was the initial idea. Then I just put the C next to it. If I can duplicate this again by du duplicating this layer and then holding shift moving it to the left clicking on T changing this to a C. Capital let C. So now I'm going to drag this to the right here, and as you can see, there's still a dint here. So I just pressed enter, and I thought, you know what, this is good. So how did I get rid of this area here? Very simple. I went to the marquee tool here, rectangular marquee tool, and then I zoomed in using alt and scroll wheel up. And then I tried to get this area here, kind of go like this, until I was happy with it. So now I'd make a new layer by going here and I would take my paint bucket tool white color press OK and click now if I control D which does deselect it's gone if I zoom out it just fits the pattern and now all I have to do is take that extra bit off the C zoom in once again I would go to the cursor right click on the C and right click on the C layer here and go to rasterize the type. Now I'm going to take the rectangular marquee tool once again, zoom in, go here, and see that's gone above the area that I'm wanting, so I'll try again. That's right. So now, as I've selected this extra area, I will press delete on my keyboard. Now, if I do control D to deselect, as you can see, it's gone. Now all I have to do is just do the same to the bottom part. Zoom in and select the correct area and press delete. Now I'm going to press Control D. I'm going to zoom out. 
as you can see, we're already getting closer to the idea. Now, you can see that the C is actually quite far from the S, so we'll get that a bit closer. Go to the cursor tool, uh, we've already got the C selected, so we'll hold shift and drag it to the right like this, and even probably a bit more. And as you can see, we still have these edges kind of sticking out, so we'll right click the S, take the marquee tool, zoom in, make sure that we remove this part. Obviously the layer is not rasterized, that's why it gave me an error message. So I'll right click, go to rasterize the type, press the delete key. Now it's gone back to normal, I had to do this to the top part as well, but the top part was the actual layer 1 rectangle that we made earlier on, so I'll go here, make this a bit smaller, and as you can see, if I zoom out, that's much better. 